Hello! In this video, we'll explore the primary motivations and challenges that led to the creation of the ISO 20022 standard, along with the key milestones in its development. I would like to recommend a rather short yet concise book written by the Swiss standards team titled ISO 20022 for Dummies. We will place the link to it in the description below. One should keep in mind that there are many different standards in the financial industry. ISO 8583 is used for almost all credit and debit card transactions, including those happening via ATMs. Several hundred million ISO 8583 messages are exchanged daily between issuing and acquiring banks. FIX is the predominant standard of the securities front office. Millions of orders, indications of interest, executions, trade capture reports, and so on are sent each day using the FIX protocol. SWIFT Proprietary, also known as MT Messages, is the standard for messaging in the correspondent banking, foreign exchange, and documentary credits. Over 11,000 financial institutions around the world use this standard to exchange millions of messages per day over the SWIFT network. ISO 15022 was introduced around 1998 which until recently used to be a predominant security standard in cross-border settlement, reconciliation and corporate action processing. Its adoption in 2003 has led to a dramatic increase in straight-through processing rates. ISO 20022 was first introduced in 2004 as a successor of ISO 15022. In 2010, the standard was initially adopted by specific systems like SEPA, Single Euro Payments Area. In 2013, some institutions initiated adoption of this standard for unification of the payment infrastructure. SWIFT and huge financial systems such as FedNow and CHOPS started migration to this standard in 2023. Recently, several cryptocurrency platforms such as Cardano, Ripple's XRP, Stellar Lumens, IOTA, and others announced compliance with ISO 20022. To assist FIs with their migration from SwiftMT to ISO 20022 messages for cross border payments and reporting, CBPR, Swift provided a free in flow transaction service at the beginning of the coexistence period to allow all members of the Swift network the receipt of both MT and the MAX messages. The coexistence period is scheduled to end in November 2025. As of December 2024, less than a third of SWIFT's payment instructions traffic had originated on ISO 20022. So, to accommodate those who are behind, SWIFT is now taking a different approach. Some of the messages will be automatically subject to contingency processing. SWIFT will offer a limited service to convert critical MT messages with additional fee after the retirement date. Some MT messages that are due to be retired completely from the network will be what is known as NAC, negatively acknowledged, and will not be delivered starting from the retirement date. Banks must therefore be prepared to handle more rejected messages and manage exceptions, should they not make the migration deadline. So, ISO 20022 is the newest standard which is intended to cover all financial areas and subdomains. A really big problem the standard addresses is each community using their own jargon, which creates confusion, especially when it comes to cross-border transactions. For example, what some players in the payments industry call an ordering customer, others refer to as a payer with ER in the end or payer with OR in the end while still others talk about a payment originator or initiator. The context also plays a role here. The payment originator or initiator is a debtor or payer with OR in the end in a credit transfer, while that payment originator or initiator is a creditor or payee in a direct debit. 
Resolving the discrepancies requires costly manual interventions, prevents automation in transaction processing, decreases visibility of cash flows and cash positions, and makes it very difficult to investigate the data for the purposes of fraud prevention. Another issue is performance, which suffers when transforming different messages data types into other notations, especially when costly manual interventions are required. The solution lies in adopting a unified, extensible standard that can help to overcome barriers linked to the use of these different syntaxes and semantics. Standardized messages lead to faster processing and provide more analytical value for businesses. Structured and rich data provides a universal language for financial communication. More complete and accurate party data leads to more effective and efficient screening compliance, and anti-money laundering processes. To conclude, ISO 2022 standard was developed for faster, efficient, more secure and transparent processing of payment transactions. Stay tuned for more and thank you for watching.